I was born into a middle class Tamil family in the island town of Rameshwaram. My father, Jainul Abdin, had neither much formal education nor much wealth. Despite these disadvantages, he possessed great innate wisdom and a true generosity of spirit. He had an ideal helpmate in my mother, Ashim. I was one of many children, a short boy with rather undistinguished looks, born to tall and handsome parents. We lived in our ancestral house, which was built in the middle of the 19th century. It was a fairly large pakka house on the mosque street in Rameshwaram. My austere father used to avoid all inessential comforts and luxuries. However, all necessities were provided for. In fact, I would say mine was a very secure childhood, both materially and emotionally. The famous Shiva temple, which makes Rameshwaram so sacred to pilgrims, was about a 10-minute walk from our house. Our locality was predominantly Muslim, but there were quite a few Hindu families too, living amicably with their Muslim neighbors. There was a very old mosque in our locality where my father would take me for evening prayers. The high priest of the Rameshwaram temple, Pakshi Lakshmana Shastri, was a very close friend of my father's. One of the most vivid memories of my early childhood is of the two men, each in his traditional attire, discussing spiritual matters. My father could convey complex spiritual concepts in very simple down-to-earth Tamil. He once told me, When troubles come, try to understand the relevance of your sufferings. Adversity always presents opportunities for introspection. I have throughout my life tried to emulate my father in my own world of science and technology. I feel convinced that there exists a divine power that can lift one up from confusion, misery, melancholy and failure and guide one to one's true place. I was about six years old when my father embarked on the project of building a wooden sailboat to take pilgrims from Rameshwaram to Dhanushkodi and back. He worked at building the boat on the seashore with the help of a relative, Ahmad Jallaluddin, who later married my sister, Zohara. Ahmad Jallaluddin became a close friend of mine, despite the difference of 15 years in our ages. We used to go for long walks together every evening. As we started from Mosque Street, our first halt would be at the imposing temple of Lord Shiva, where we would circle around the temple with the same reverence as any other pilgrim. Jalaluddin's schooling had been limited, principally because of his family's straitened circumstances. At the time I speak of, he was the only person on the entire island who could write English. He wrote letters for almost anybody in need. Jalaluddin always spoke to me about educated people, of scientific discoveries, of contemporary literature, and of the achievements of medical science. Another person who greatly influenced my childhood was my first cousin, Shamsuddin. He was the sole distributor for newspapers in Rameshwaram and a one-man operation. The newspapers would arrive at Rameshwaram station by the morning train. The Second World War broke out in 1939 when I was eight years old. Soon India was forced to join the Allied forces and something like a state of emergency was declared. The first casualty came in the form of the suspension of the train halt at Rameshwaram station. 
newspapers now had to be bundled and thrown out from the moving train on the Rameshwaram road between Rameshwaram and Dhanushkodi. That forced Shamsuddin to look for a helping hand to catch the bundles and, as if naturally, I filled the slot. Shamsuddin helped me earn my first wages. Every child is born with some inherited characteristics into a specific socio-economic and emotional environment and trained in certain ways by figures of authority. I inherited honesty and self-discipline from my father. From my mother, I inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness. But it was the time I spent with Jalaluddin and Shamsuddin that perhaps contributed most to the uniqueness of my childhood and made all the difference in my later life.